day. Today I am going to be talking about um, seeking the mercy of the Lord before getting his favor. That is the theme of my message and I am going to be giving you quite a number of scriptures to look at but as we look at this uh, subject on mercy we are going to be looking at uh, some of the words which I feel I might want to um, define at the start of our teaching so that as we get into the word of God you will be with me as you understand the meaning of these words. The first word that I'm going to be talking about is the word called retribution. The second word is mercy and the third word is grace which is unmerited favor. Now retribution simply means that when you sin you've got a consequence of the sin. When you err you've got a consequence of the um, error that you would have committed. Um, when you violate a law, when you, when you violate an ordinance, there is usually a consequence. So retribution has to do with violation of the law and the uh, consequences of the that law that has been violated. And mercy and grace, when we look at mercy and grace, love and forgiveness, they are characteristics of the triune God and they are actually interrelated uh in fact they are actually correlated as we, we we study about all these words and the mystery of the triune god uh knits these three traits together which are retribution mercy and um grace in a beautiful type of tapestry of redemption and restoration for all of us now we receive mercy that is what I believe. We all receive mercy from the Lord. And then after receiving the mercy, that is when we get the grace, the grace or the unmerited favor. So what proceeds or what precedes the grace is the mercy. Mercy has to precede um, the grace. And mercy is God's qualification to get grace. So mercy qualifies us for the grace of God. And we need to pray for mercy all the time so that we can get the grace. Now, the focus that we have today is we are going to have our main focus on mercy. Now, mercy simply means loving kindness, uh, forgiveness, pity, when somebody shows compassion for you, when somebody is, you know, feeling sorry, feeling bad about how you're feeling, it it is, it's actually the peace, pity that is shown at our weakness. So mercy is usually the pity that is conveyed by somebody when that particular person who is pitying us is looking at our weaknesses or our vulnerability. So with that kind of mercy, it is not just looking at our own vulnerability, but it is also expressing love and expressing love and enduring love to bring out uh, a person from that kind of um, situation. Mercy, from how I see it, the mercy of the Lord is enduring and the mercy God shows us is actually a creating type of mercy. It creates the love of God. And mercy shows God's redeeming love. So when we look at God's mercy, it shows his redeeming love. And mercy shows God's continuing love. And what does the Bible say about mercy? I am going to quickly look at Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, which says, It is because of the Lord's mercy and loving kindness that we are not consumed because of his tender compassions. So when we are looking at the word mercy, it is further exploded by the writer of Lamentations when he says it is tender compassions that fail not. And now these mercies of the Lord, 
the tender compassion of the Lord, his loving kindness. The Bible says this loving kindness is made new every morning. In other words, it is refurbished every morning. It is renewed every morning and it is abundant and stable. Now, the steadfast love of the Lord, it never ceases and his mercy never come to an end. And these messes, they are renewed every morning. Now, God's plan stems from his merciful love for all the people, knowing that there was nothing we could do to end our way into his presence. There's nothing that we have ever done to end our way into the presence of God. He made a way through his son, Jesus Christ, and through the crucifixion. Now, in the Hebrew Bible, there is a cluster of related words that are often translated to as mercy. And this is depending upon where they appear in the text. And there is the Hebrew word Ahava. And Ahava refers to God's enduring love. Something, the kind of love which is enduring. The kind of love which forbears the kind of love which is tolerant, the kind of love which is patient. So that is uh, the first type of um, uh, Hebrew word that we have for mercy. It is enduring love God has for Israel, much like the love between a husband and a wife, uh, that there has to be some kind of sacrifice, a kind of endurance, because in a relationship, people really you know, God get on um, in each other's toes. So love in that kind of a relationship has got to be enduring. So the Ahava type of mercy that we're talking about here is the kind of mercy that is enduring. And then there is what we call the Rakamimim, and which comes from the root word Rakam. Now, a womb, womb, meaning um, therefore there might be more literally understood the suggestion as maternal connection. So we are looking at the type of mercy which is linked to maternal connection between God and human beings. God being the sovereign father of our, all, all of us. He's got maternal instincts towards us. He's got paternal instincts towards us. He feels for us. He has long suffering for us. He's got loving kindness for us. And in a famous passage from Psalm 685 that speaks of the Israelites, returned from exile, it is said that when mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed. Now, mercy and loving kindness and truth have met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven yes the lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase and righteousness shall go before him and shall make his footstep a way in which to go now we are also going to be looking at um psalms 136 now as we look at one psalms 136 we need to recognize that psalms 136 has got about uh, 26 verses and at the end of every verse there is a refrain for his mercy endureth forever for his mercy endureth forever now a refrain simply means it's a reputation of the mercies of god I am going to read uh, Psalms 136 and give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Verse 3, give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. To him alone does great, does great wonders for his mercy endures forever. To him who is understanding made the heavens for his mercy endures forever to him who made the great light for his mercy endures forever the moon and the star, stars to rule by night for his mercy endures forever now 
when we look through the whole chapter, it is talking about the mercies of God. And now when we go through this, we are going to be looking at mercy as something that endures forever. The mercies of God, the compassion of God endures forever. The compassion of God creates love every time. So when we look at the verses from verse 4 to, to 7, that is of Psalms chapter 36, 136 verses 4 to 9, it is cre the mercies of God creates love. And then when we look at again verses 10 to verses 20, we, we, we see the mercies of God as redeeming love. So when to him who struck Egypt by killing their firstborn for his mercies endured forever. It is talking about the, the redeeming love of God. All the verses from verse 10 to 22 talk about the redeeming love of God. You know, how God redeemed Israel. You know, the Lord was showing his mercy. And we are also looking from verses 23 to 26. It talks about the continuing love of God. So mercy has got all these attributes to it. Who remembered us in our low condition. So which means the mercy of God looks at us when we are in our very, very low places, when we are most challenged, when we are, we are not you know, having everything the way they want to go. The mercies of God continue to to be for us and the mercies of God gives food to all living creatures and the mercies of God endures forever. Now Psalms 136 verse 4, this psalm has special indentation and uh, punctuation to set off the repeated refrain that I have made a, a reference to that interrupts the body of the psalm dashes at the end of a line and indicate that the line is one talking about the mercies of God. Now, sometimes it is very difficult to describe how the mercy of God works, but it is quite evident. Now, we see that this repeated um, refrain is lauded as Judah fought the Amorites and the Ammonites and the Munites. Um, during the time of Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21, when he had consulted with the people, this is Jehoshaphat, he appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy priestly garments as they went out before the army saying, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercies endure forever. Now, when we look at this scripture, Second Chronicles chapter 20 to 21, when the children of Judah, when Judah began to sing whilst they were confronted by the enemy, when they began to sing, the mercies of the Lord endure forever. We notice that as they began to sing unto the Lord, sing praises unto the Lord, as they began to make a symphony of their praise that invoked the mercy of God. When God hears his mercy being spoken about in praise, it moves the heart of God. It moves God himself. And when this symphony of praise is lauded, attributing the, 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 you know, the attributes of the merciful God, the Lord set ambushments against the Ammonites and Israel subdued the enemy through the song. Now, we need to understand that when we begin to make a symphony of prayer, a symphony of praise, it doesn't matter what you're going through, but God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we begin to sing the mercies of the Lord endures forever, the Lord is a God of precedence. What he has done before uh, during the time of Judah, when the ch children of Judah were surrounded by the Ammonites, they began to sing the mercies of the Lord in Jewel for, 
forever. And when they continued singing and when they continued making a symphony unto God, the Lord set ambushments. I want you to know that when you are facing a situation, when you're facing a crisis in your home, begin to praise God for his mercies endure forever. Amen. Now, when we talk of his mercy, when we loud it, the Lord fights our battle. Give thanks to the Lord for his mercies endure forever. Mercy, in the, there is also a lot of mercy that is given um, in, in scripture. And the great halal is the refrain of Psalms 136. The mercies of the Lord endures forever. That is a great halal. And other people actually believe that um, the, I mean, the Jews would usually make this halal, this kind of praise. The mercies of the Lord endure forever. And some scholars believe that Jesus sang the great halal with his disciples when they went out to the Mount of Olives after the Last Supper and the final meal that he shared with his apostles before his crucifixion. And mercy sets the context for many of Jesus' teachings in the Gospel of Matthew. Now, Jesus tells the story of the unmerciful servant who has his own debt wiped away, but refuses to forgive another servant who only owed him a few cents. The story teaches us that we need to forgive others because we have been forgiven ourselves. And Jesus has this face of mercy. Jesus has got this attribute of mercy. And also in, uh, uh, in the, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples to understand the meaning of this phrase, where Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, where he says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Now, we are going to just make reference to the story of Bartimaeus. We know that Bartimaeus was a blind man. And we also understand that he was, um, he was not a person who was respected. Now, he hears that Jesus is marching through Jericho and Please note, as the blind man shrieked and screamed in confidence based on the faith that he heard on, of what Jesus could do for him, the blind man was pitied by Jesus and mercy was extended to him. You know, Bartimaeus was blind and he was not, a, he was poor. He was blind, he was a destitute. But when he heard that, Jesus was passing through. It was his opportunity to cry out for mercy. The Bible says he shrieked and he cried out to Jesus. And there was a lot of confidence in the crying of Bartimaeus. And this confidence springs from the faith that he had in Jesus. And it is that faith that Jesus responds to for the transformation that we hear of Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus, the blind man, had that confidence that same way you have confidence in Jesus Christ. Now, Bartimaeus believed that it was only Jesus who could reform him and transform and restore his sight. He needed restoration of his sight from Jesus. Bartimaeus was a destitute. Bartimaeus was dependent on other people. But when he heard that Jesus was passing around, he could not be stopped. And when Jesus heard this cry for mercy, Jesus responded. And in Luke chapter 18, from verse 38 to 43, and he shouted, this is Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, take pity, have mercy on me. Verse 38 says, but those who were in front reproved him. Now, telling him to keep quiet, yet he screamed and shrieked so much that the more, the more he cried, son of David, take pity and have mercy on him. Now, sometimes people don't understand your troubles. 
People don't even understand your struggles. People don't understand the challenges that you're going through. And sometimes when you're crying out to God, the same people who don't know what you're going through, they are the very same people who stop you. And I want you to know that when we cry out to God, when we cry out to God for mercy, Jesus will hear us. Jesus responds to our faith when we cry out. And Jesus, because he's a merciful God, he's our merciful father, he pities us. And the Bible says in verse 40 of Luke chapter 18, then Jesus stood still and ordered that he be led to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, when we draw near to Jesus closer in our faith, through our faith, um, to his presence, Jesus always speaks to our faith. Jesus responds more to our faith, not our desperation. Jesus responds mostly to our faith and Jesus responds to our faith and not desperation. And not Jesus said, receive your sight for it is your faith springing from your confidence in God. It is that faith that transforms us and heals us. I want you to know when you are having challenges, cry out to God, shriek out to God. Because the Bible says when we look at Psalms chapter 68 verse 30, Ethiopia will raise up her hands in submission to God. You need to raise your hands to a God who is merciful when you are faced with a challenge. Now we learn here that instantly the blind man received his sight and he did not only receive his sight, he followed Jesus. May you too receive your sight and be a true disciple of Jesus. Now, as mercy was extended to him, Jesus healed Bartimaeus instantly. What happens when Jesus is moved with compassion? In Matthew 20, Jesus asked the other two blind men that we meet in um, Matthew 20, and he asks them, what do you want me to do for you? Now, it is good to yell out, to be generic, but it is very important for you to be specific on what you want Jesus to do for you. Now, what do you want me to do for you? They said, and Lord, let our eyes be opened. I love this, that the scripture which says, moved by compassion. Jesus was moved by mercy. Jesus was moved by this loving kindness. Jesus was moved by his love for these people. He touched the eyes of this blind man and immediately they received their sight. Like I said, Jesus is a God of precedence. What he has done before, he may not do it exactly the same way to you, but simply because he is moved by compassion, he is moved by mercy. Whatever situation you are going through, it can be sicknesses, it can be loss of jobs, it can be loss of confidence. You know your challenge is better. Talk to God specifically about what God, what you want your God to you to do for you. And the Lord responds much to your mercy. And Mark tells us about a man with leprosy who came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. You know, he was begging to be healed. And the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And Jesus was again moved by compassion. When we look at Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 42, Jesus reached out and touched him. When we reach out to Jesus in faith, through faith, in our confidence, to him, in him, the Lord will reach out and respond to our mercy, to his mercy. And when we touch him, when we touch the compassion of Jesus, the Lord will definitely minister unto us. Now, there are other similar occurrences in scripture. And each time Jesus feeds the multitude, we are told Jesus had compassion for them. 
and where it for example in mark chapter 6 verse 34 mark 8 2 and matthew 14 14 often when jesus saw crowds of people who seemed lost who looked lost who were really lost who were sick who needed healing jesus was always moved compassion and jesus is always moved with compassion when he looks at your situation your situation is not too big for god the lord is going to meet you at the point of need when you focus your attention on jesus now jesus compassion always leads to action jesus cannot show compassion and not act whether healing feeding providing or calling others to serve what would it look like if we too were moved with compassion god breaks our hearts for what breaks your god breaks for us especially when we are broken the lord himself breaks for us now i pray that you also receive the mercy of god today i pray that this mercy causes you to be different i pray that the mercy of god continues to abound in your life now defeating death jesus opened our access to god for us through prayer god's word and the holy spirit living in us each day brings fresh new mercy for us every morning god is faithful like what lamentation says the manifold mercies of the lord they are renewed every morning the mercies that god has me for today they are not the messes that were the messes yesterday they were not the same messes two weeks ago three years ago 20 years ago the messes that the lord has got for you the messes of god the compassion of god is renewed for you every morning now what does mercy do and why do we need mercy mercy fuels compassion providing promising glints of light in a darkened world when i am in a position where i know things are not right normally i love this reference of the scripture in judges chapter 15 which speaks about samson the bible says samson had killed a thousand you know a thousand philistines with the jawbone of a dead donkey but what amazes me most is when he had slaughtered a thousand philistines the bible says he grew weary and he was exhausted he was wet out and he said to the lord shall i die of faint and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised samson was thirsty at that time he was so exhausted he was tired he did everything that he could possibly do to defeat the philistines but as human as he was he lost focus sometimes we can be prayerful all the time we can be reading the word of god all the time we can be doing different things as we minister unto god but at times we fall faint we get faint but what i like by this, about samson the bible says he cried for mercy and when he cried for mercy unto the lord he the lord god the god of mercy the lord of passion the bible says he made the hollow um places of lay open for samson the lord god himself he brought open the hollow places of lehi where samson was fighting the enemy now i want you to understand when you are in your place of vulnerability your god is a merciful god the lord god had mercy for for samson and he opened the cleft of lehi and there were waters that came out i want you to know that in your time of desperation the lord 
opens hollow places of layers for you. These hollow places of lay, the Bible says they are places, the waters that God gives to the people who cry out to him. Because he's a merciful God, the Lord is obliged to provide, to make provision for the waters of mercy. For the manifold mercies of the Lord never come to an end. His kindness is from everlasting to everlasting. Mercies chooses not to be offended. Mercies of God are compassionate. The mercies of God, they see a hurting heart. They see behind hateful words. The mercies of God are also reflected at the cross of Jesus, a direct reflection of his love for us. God's mercy is reflected at the cross, a direct reflection of his sacrifice. Mercy is an extension and expression of God's love towards us, an act of kindness, an act of compassion, an act of favor. Mercy is characteristic of the one true God that you love, that I also love. What does God do with his mercy? God's mercy is closely akin or closely knitted or closely intertwined to forgiveness. What we do in response to God's mercy sends an important mercy message to the people in our lives. James is very clear in his letter that though deeds are not required to own God's favor or to be a Christian, a repentant heart that loves God will surely be evident by the lives we live in his article, Have Mercy on Me. David Mattis says, when God shows his mercy, he does so with utter intentional and strength. And we as his creatures get our deepest glimpse of who he is, not just in his sovereignty, but his goodness. God has chosen to be merciful to his people. Mercy is an expression of who God is. Mercy is an expression of God's love for us. The place of prayer is a place of mercy. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have this God who is so merciful. Verse 16 says, So let us then fiercely and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy. We receive mercy from the throne of God's grace. And we find grace to help in good time for every need. Now, let mercy prevail over justice in your life today. Let the mercy of God overwhelm you today. Let mercy be yours today. We receive mercy and then we get grace. Mercy is God's qualification to, God, to get God's grace. Mercy qualifies us for God's grace. We need to pray for mercy so that we can get grace. Now, the veil of the temple, the Bible says, was torn in two. A reflection that we can go before the mercy seat of God with confidence, without fear, because from between the wings of the cherubims, is where we have the mercy city of God. Today, I want you to believe God. I want you to know that God is a God of mercy. At one time, David himself, he was confronted with three choices, but he decided to fall on God's mercy. I want you to encourage you to fall on the mercy of God. I want you to entrust yourself to the mercies of God. Now, completions of our assignments are impossible without mercy. Completions of your assignment in life, of your calling in life, is made complete 
by the mercies of God that he shows to you. You need the mercies of God. The Lord will perfect that which contents you. The Lord's mercy is enduring forever. The Lord's mercy endured forever. Do not be forgetful of the mercies of God. God's grace is arrested through mercy. I want to repeat myself. The grace, the unmerited favor that we have before God is arrested through the mercy of God. When we find mercy before God, then the grace of God is extended to us. We look at the life of Esther. The Lord had mercy on Esther. And when God had mercy on Esther, then favor was extended to Esther. God rewards us through a platform of humility and he gives us his mercy. Everything that God consents you must be God's concern. Let the mercy of God prevail you. Let prevail in your life. Let the mercy of God prevail over judgment in your life. Today, I want to encourage you um, to seek the mercy of God as you pray to him. I do not need money to buy this mercy, but let the mercy of God prevail over your prayer life. The mercy of God must prevail over your gifting. The mercy of God must prevail over your calling. The mercy of God, obtain mercy and then go through the arena of God's favor. Once you go through the arena of God's favor, it means you cannot have favor of men. Go through the mercy which takes you to the favor of God. And once you have mercy from God, God's favor, there's no way men can refuse to give you favor. The Lord changes my story because of God's mercy towards me. Now, mercy is God's loyal love to us. And even when we do not deserve his mercy, God's mercy opens doors for us. I want you to know that it is God's mercy which God's, which caused him to pity uh, Jacob over his brother. Leah was pitied by God and she obtained God's mercy, which ushered her to um, have more children. When God pities us, when God pities us, God's mercy rewrites our story and we will never be the same. The mercy of God, when it is abound in your life, there is going to be a rewriting of your story. There will be a rewriting of your story. It was through the death of Jesus that we obtained mercy. It was through the, Jesus, the, the death of Jesus Christ that his mercy is revealed. You need the mercy of God all the days of our life. When mercy locates you, everything makes a difference. When the mercy of the Lord locates you, everything makes a difference. I want to encourage you today to seek the mercy of God. If I had time, I was going to talk about the life of a woman called Rispa, who had his two ch children killed. The Bible says Rispa was a daughter of I and also a concubine of Saul. She was not even an official married woman of Saul. But when her daughter, when her sons were killed, including the other five sons, five grandsons of hers. The Bible says she spent, some other Bible authorities claim that she spent about three months looking at the dead bodies of her children. And some people said she spent about five months and other theologians believe she spent 10 months seeking the mercy of God, seeking the favor of God. But what I want about what happened to Rispa, she sought the mercy of God over the dead bodies of her sons. She had faith and because of the faith she had, God responded to her faith. And after that, the Bible says 
there was rain. If we look at Second Samuel chapter 21, the Lord brought rain to Israel because of a woman who cried for mercy, who cried for mercy. And it was through the mercy that God sure showed to Rispa that there was favor for Rispa. There was favor for Rispa and God brought rain to rain. And it did, it, it did not only end there, it caused the favor of God that was upon Rispa, the favor that God that was instrued to, to Rispa through the message of God caused David to invite Rispa into the palace. Eventually, Rizba is married to David. Eventually, the bones of Saul, which were buried in Jabesh, were, were buried in honor because of the favor of the Lord. I just want to pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are a God of mercy. We thank you that it is through the arena of mercy that we gain the favor of God. It is through the arena of you bestowing your mercy on us that we get the favor before God, before you, God, and then we get favor before men. Father, we thank you. I present every woman who is listening, every person who is hearing this message. I pray that the message of God will continue to be upon their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen.